So when you come into Digimap Schools, obviously there's the home page. Let's just zoom in a little bit and find applications. Going to come into the OSHQ here. So on the left-hand panel, you'll see the folder for saving maps. So we give you that option to be able to save maps. You can create lots and lots of maps. And very quickly, to, to save a map straight away, you just click on the Save Map tool. Then you have to give it a title, a class name, and then give it a pupil's name. Or this could obviously be base maps that you collect or create yourself. We can click Save. It will create my map. And as you can see, then it gives me the details of the map name, when it was created and who it was created by. So a very simple way to better save any of the maps that you create. And that just means that anything you overlay on a map or any uh, aerial imagery or the historical mapping, you can then save that as well. Now, what we also have here is we have an unlock button. So with your Digimap Schools login, you will get a four number pin. This is your administrative pin number. So you can pop your four number pin in and this now opens up another couple of options. So the first one is you can actually create a Windows file structure. So I've got some folders here where I save maps into. So you can see I've got lots of folders. So you can just click new folder. We can call it two and then it will create that folder for me. So I've got folder number two. That means I can save maps into those folders. So in your school environment, you can then create folders for each year group. So if you've got year one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, et cetera, et cetera, you can create folders for those year groups. And then you can create subfolders within those folders. So then you can have actually a different folder for each group within those year groups. So it just means you can tidy up where you save your maps to. Uh, you also get the option to rename, so that's quite self-expansion, rename those, and the relock as well. Now, one thing as well, when you save a map in this with that pin number open, when you pop your pin number in, you will see against my maps here, I have my rubbish bin. And what this enables me to do then is delete out particular maps. So if I click on the delete here, it will ask me if I want to delete that map. I'm going to keep my map for now, or delete your folders. Now, this administrative pin, as I said, is a teacher's administrative pin. Do not give this pin number to your pupils because this will enable them to be able to delete things out of maps and uh, of maps and particular folders. So don't let them have that pin number. Make sure you keep that safe. But it's a way for you to be able to then manage your maps within here. So you get too many or you want to delete a folder out, you can hit the delete folder there as well. And then to save a map to a particular folder, you just click on the folder, hit save map. Put a title, etc., in, and it will then save your maps to with that particular type, particular folder. So it's quite straightforward and easy to be able to create and save your maps. Now, a couple of things you need to be wary of when you save maps within this particular tool. The first one is around safeguarding. So it will be at your discretion if you get pupils to save personal information on a map in this service, simply because when you save a map, anyone that has access to your username and password will be able to view any particular map that you save so enables that everybody can view any map saved within the service so from a safeguarding point of view it's at your discretion if you get pupils to save those maps now the second thing is when you save a map in this service it finalizes it i.e you cannot change that saved map that means <clears throat> when you actually create a map you cannot change that particular map. So this is just a, um, a function that we've enabled just to stop people tampering with other people's maps. Just means you can't create a map and then delete things off it and instantly save it. When you, when you, If you want to change a saved map, you have to resave it with a different name, i.e. version 1 and version 2. So it's just a control element we've got there just to stop people tampering with other people's maps. Yeah, Debbie just asked a question. If we use folders, I assume the general, general users can access the folders. Absolutely. Any folders that you see here, when you log in with your username and password, you will be able to see those folders under that save icon. And of course, you will then be able to view any maps in that save tool as well, or within that folder. So it means anyone in the school can use those and you can direct them to those. It's just a way to manage your maps a little bit easier rather than just have a great big long list of maps under your particular username or password. Now, one other option you've got, guys, if you're not comfortable with people saving maps within this service, again, you don't want to be able to share any personal information. If I come up to the top right hand corner here next to where it says Digimap for Schools, there's a little drop down arrow. I'm going to click on that one and I go to edit your preferences 
and using your four number pin that you got with your username and password this will enable you to hide that save tool so if you don't want your pupils saving maps within this service you can simply highlight that little save tool save your preferences and that will actually remove that save tool from the option on the left hand side so if you're not comfortable with, uh, with your pupils doing that it's a way to do it so let's have a quick look at how we save maps so i'm going to go to the save tool at the top so we can generate a print file so what you immediately get is your content preview of your location you also then get your layout so this shows you your bigger uh, area so what you can then do is you can actually move the box around so if it's not actually covering the location that you want it to be in you can move this box around just to so say you find your location now when you get your list of options here you can give it a title so let's call this map one we can enter name now you can print to an exact scale or a rounded scale so obviously if you're using all the survey maps you want to print to an exact scale if you're doing map skills so you can do that you can print pdf or jpeg a4 a3 portrait or landscape now this is a particularly good option for obviously printing maps that you want to use with your pupils but it's also a way to be able to create maps for that personal geography so the personal information on my suggestion is to get to get your pupils to save their maps as PDFs and save them to your school network, which is a much safer location for them to be able to save those maps. So you do have an option to be able to save this particular file that we create and save it somewhere else as well. Now, in the additions, if you add your drawings, so if there's anything you've overlaid information on, so you've drawn a route or you've added a picture, you can click that little box and it will un it'll add your drawings. So we can add our grid lines as well. So if you want to do your put your eastings and northings around your map, we can do that so i'm going to click on that one and then we can add a legend simply by clicking a legend and when we generate a file it should then show us a print file that looks something like this so you can see i've got my map with a title with my eastings and northerns around i've got my scale bar etc etc on my map so i can then save this if i've got it in my web browser like i said for that personal mapping is a good way of doing this and one thing to be wary of when you print maps from this service as well when you open it your actual pdf here you need to make one small change so on the right hand panel here it says fit to page width or scale always make sure you print to scale because otherwise it won't print to the exact scale of the map now there's nothing we can do manually to over uh, to, to do this you need to manually override this because your your printer will print to a size of paper as opposed to a scale so when you're printing make sure you this scale reads 100 and then it'll enable you to print exactly to the scale uh, and one other thing we've added guys as well sorry there's a question in. sorry no? okay so we'll come back to the world map guys now what you've also added another option now when we come to print you've now got a button that says print the whole world so this enables you to print the whole world so if you want a whole world map you can print that and we're going to add a legend here so if you want to add a legend so if you're looking at historical maps or current mapping and you want the appropriate um, particular legend to go with it i'm going to come to generate file this will take a couple of seconds Of course, as I'm doing this live, it's going to go really slow. But what it will eventually do, it'll eventually create me two files. It'll create me a print file, which will be my world map. And then it will show me my legend. Okay, so you can see I've got my folder here. So I'm going to go into my zip folder. It will open my little folder for me. And I can see I've got my two files. So one will be my map. So we can see my map on the right hand side here. But I also then get my legend. So then I can save those two particular files as well or print those directly. So that's how you get your save files. So as you can see, guys, pretty straightforward to create your uh, create your maps and then save them. You've got the save option on the panel here, or you can use the print option to be able to print and save your maps as well. Of course, you could take screen grabs and drop them into paint as well if you don't want to go through the print process. But that's how we save and print our maps within Digimap Schools.